is that? Because the smartest scientists in the entire world all agree that it's real. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> Mr. Reynolds, these were all the smartest scientists. Only problem is, they kept being wrong! Oh, this is insane, you fool! I'm a fool because I have more faith in the saints that wrote the Bible? Yeah, because you just read the words of a bunch of guys that you never met, and you just take it on faith that everything they wrote was true. Hmm. And what makes you think what your scientists are writing is any more truer than my saints? Because there are volumes of proven data, numbers, you know, figures. Have you poured through the data yourself, the numbers, the figures? Well, no, I'm, no. Oh, interesting. So let me get this straight, Mr. Reynolds. You get your information from a book written by men you've never met. And you take their words as truth based on a willingness to believe, a desire to accept, a leap of, oof, dare I say it, <laughs> faith? Ah, come on, come on. Look, I mean, I don't even know how I'm supposed to respond to that. Like, ah, come on. I rest my case. It's always question the scientists and their foundations. At the moment, modern physics is not making a lot of sense. What is everything made of? You know, oops, there's about 95% stuff we don't know. Philosophically speaking, it's very uncomfortable. Because if the Earth is in the center of the universe, that means that somebody put it there. Matter tells space how to curve. S space tell, did I get that right? The science community is, is ignoring a lot of the things that we're looking at. And so normal people are going out and doing experiments. And one of the experiments has turned up um, an amazing fact that we've not been told and it, it destroys the whole idea of this, this uh, heliocentric system. Um, and that is the moon. Now, you can actually measure the temperature of the moonlight next to the, measure, the temperature of the uh, shade of the moonlight, and you'll find the moonlight is colder than the shade, the opposite from the sun. So the moon is throwing out its own light, and that light is the opposite from the sun. Now, that tells you that it's not reflecting the sun's light. Uh -huh. It's producing its own, and its light is different from the sun's. So, you know, the scientific community have not told us this, yeah, because they won't tell us this, because um, it destroys this idea that the, the sun is, you know, is lighting up the moon. Everyone knows, like, if you're in sunlight, um, it's colder in the shade, right? So if it's 100 degrees right. in the sun, it's 90 degrees in shade. You go to the moonlight, like, to, especially in a full moon, especially if it's high in the sky, the moon is its own independent object. It is not reflecting the sun rays. Uh, the sun is its own object. Also, you know, the, the um, uh, about the same size, which is, you know, again, coincidentally, you know, why the moon fits so perfectly in front of the sun during uh, an eclipse. We always thought it was coincidence that even though it was 400 miles, 400 times farther away, that it was also exactly 400 times less diameter, which is why it fits. And the other weird thing about the moon, which everyone thinks, oh, it's just a coincidence, is that uh, we never see the other side of it. It's constantly, perfectly rotating, so we only see one side of the moon exactly one side it's not like we have like a quarter of a degree every five years or half a degree here and there it's always the same side there are no coincidences when it comes to this system it was it was deliberately built but i think it was deliberately built to be detected and i think we were naturally supposed to figure this thing out uh, maybe as late as the 1970s but the government figured it out first and they have been doing spending a heck of a lot of money trying to uh, to keep it a secret. The other question is, well, how come ships don't go off the sea if it's flat? How come ships don't fall off the edge? Well, here's why you don't fall off the edge. There's a 200 to 300 foot high wall <laughs> that is the border, the scripture says, is keeping everything in. Nothing's going past that. Because they don't want them finding out what's beyond them. It's a 20,000 foot sheer wall of ice. But that's never stopped me before. Risk? Of course I'm aware of the risks. Thank you for your concern. Physics. Why objects move on a ball spinning a thousand miles an hour while it's going 26,000 miles around the sun. Basically the model we accept it right now. The sailor thinks that he's traveling around the earth this way. 
when in effect he's traveling around the earth this way. They began flying it around the world from Abu Dhabi last year with stops in India and China, then across the vast Pacific. Does running around your neighborhood prove that the neighborhood is round? I was an airline pilot for Delta for 26 years. A pilot's primary flight instrument is his artificial horizon, which he has to be maintained level to keep from climbing and descending. From a cockpit, weather permitting, I could see hundreds of miles in all directions, viewing cities connected by roads across the flat plain as far as the eye could see. If a pilot is, uh, is flying around the curve of the Earth, then it sh he should be dipping the nose down and every, every five minutes he should be dipping the nose down to, to stay around the curve. Mm -hmm. That's absolute proof that a plane flies over a flat surface rather than a curved one. Now, how come in all these ball pictures, man, you can see all the continents pretty much, and there's just a little bit of clouds here and there. Man, it's like some of these pictures, like there's some where they show the Earth at night and you can see all the lights and stuff. It's like, you're telling me the entire continent didn't have clouds? The entire <laughs> fucking continent? Like, you can see Africa and all these lights and all this stuff. Like, you know, if you turn on your porch light, I guess you can see it from space, apparently. And it's like there's no clouds in some of these pictures. And they spelled out the word sex right recently, probably a few months ago, in one of the clouds. But, you know, if they do their research, they say, well, those are composites. And I said, well, how come they copy and paste the clouds on some of these? And they use the same cloud form. Like, if you're going to make a composite, make a composite, but you shouldn't be copying and pasting clouds. That means you're, you're adding stuff that's not real. Yeah, and the thing is, those pictures that you're talking about, the blue marble pictures, you know, I think there's about maybe eight to ten of them over time that uh, NASA has put out, and you're absolutely right. None of those pictures look the same. The color of the water is different. Like you said, the continents are different sizes. It's just unbelievable. And I think what happened originally was they would put these things out and nobody was paying any attention to it, you know? And then all of a sudden now, people are paying attention to it, and now they're pulling these pictures in, and... It's an obvious fraud. What? And the thing is, there's supposedly tens of thousands of satellites orbiting Earth. We can't get any close-ups of Earth. We can't get a view of Australia with the building's upside down. And they'll look at you like you're crazy. <laughs> but really, you're the same one for asking real questions. I was taught school book bullshit in public school and somehow I was able to break free and free my mind. You know how I did it? I watched NASA rockets explode a bunch of times. Fly off sideways and not go to space. If you watch the trajectory of the space shuttle, it doesn't go straight up. It always goes in a curve and out to sea. point is they actually go horizontal the space shuttle goes horizontal it never goes any further up it goes horizontal um, very very low down in the in the atmosphere you know it's it's still in the atmosphere while it's uh, horizontal so it never gets any higher and it goes out of sight not because it goes too high because it goes too far down range and they have a, a plane that's mocked up to look like a space shuttle uh, that's uh, it's a jet powered aircraft that's it, it's not a glider, it's, it's an aircraft. Um, and that's what they're fooling us, uh, taking billions of dollars in and giving us images and, uh, and, and fake planes um, for that 10 billion, you know, however many billions of dollars it is. What goes up must come down. Um, and literally, we have not ever seen anything 
that um, has ever gone up and not come down. One thing I really want your generation to embrace is that the Earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the Earth. There's no place to go. Rockets don't have brakes. It's, it literally stopped. All of that angular momentum from the, from the rotation of the rocket and the linear momentum from flying up just stopped. No, it had to have hit something. What would it hit? If it hit a solid surface, the rocket would have been destroyed, and most likely the camera too, so we wouldn't have the footage, and obviously that's not the case. It's a long fly ball going back, back, and the ball shatters the sky, bringing the ocean itself down into the stadium. Oh, Simpson just broke this dream's reality wide open. I know we have still not shattered that highest and hardest glass ceiling, but someday someone will, and hopefully sooner than we might think right now. There's no place to go. Although we weren't able to shatter that highest, hardest glass ceiling this time, thanks to you, it's got about 18 million cracks in it. And it may be hard to see tonight, but we are all standing under a glass ceiling right now. People figured out that we were an enclosed system. The more advanced we got, it would be the biggest thought on our minds. That's all we care about. You could make a wildlife preserve a thousand miles square. All people, you know, all human beings would do is just be knocking on the fence constantly, going, you know, why is this fence here? Who built the fence? Why are we in here? And so on and so on. Why do you think that uh, Truman has never come close to discovering the true nature of his world until now? We accept the reality of the world with which we're presented. Earth, 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 what does gravity look like? Gravity is something we can't see. But we know it's a great invisible force that keeps us all here on Earth. It's a natural force that keeps us all from flying off into space. We were always told that the world is flat. You are told right. Don't listen to her. I've been patient with you, Sarah. One knows I've been patient. But now your words have revealed you. Of gravity was discovered by Sir Isaac Newton in 1687. That's almost 200 years ago, Uncle Evan. But there is only one law the law of God. What is gravity? You have no idea. Okay, next question. <laughs> wow. No, here's the difference we can describe gravity, we can say what it does to other things, we can, we can measure it, predict with it. But when you start asking, like, what it is, I, I, I don't know. Einstein, in an Einsteinian answer, we would say gravity is the curvature of space and time. 
and that and objects will follow the curvature of space-time and we we interpret that as a force of gravity that's probably the best answer I can give to a what is gravity question or why is there gravity that's the best I can do there I think that that's a good start what you know how everybody believes the world is flat like a pancake well they're all wrong the world is actually round like an orange the world is an orange. Hmm. And? And? Well, that's it. It's a great idea. It's one of my best ones. Yeah. Here's the, uh, the picture of the Earth from, uh, from space. There it is. Since you were a kid, you've seen this image. But uh, you've never seen it from that point of view. You've never seen that with your eyes from that scale of a model that point of view from outside of the planet's surface. What's the point of this grand deception? I think Eric Dubay explains it best. Uh, people are always asking, you know, why do they do this? I mean, this is, I mean, other than the obvious profit margin motive, NASA being the biggest black budget black hole in existence, sucking in over $30 billion taxpayer money for the fake moon landings alone. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, hundreds of billions of dollars, and not just NASA, but RASA and all the other fake space organizations around the world giving CGI images for hundreds of billions of dollars. You want to put something in context, if you want to do something with three and a half trillion dollars, you can do whatever you want. Now, let's see, how do we go about proving that? Go to the uh, seashore. Go to a seashore. Watch a ship sail away. They don't disappear all at once. Now, first, the bottom will disappear. See, the bottom of the ship is gone. Now we can see midway up, and then the whole thing disappears. Now, ships came back. They didn't fall off the table. So people realized that the world is curved. I mean, it's a big curve, but it's curved. So the process of testing claims, the world is flat, the world is round, is what we call science. Now, if you have a claim that can't be tested, that's what we call pseudoscience. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. Boats don't disappear over the curvature of the horizon. Boats disappear due to perspective. All you have to do is go to the beach, watch a boat disappear from your eye, and then whip out your telescope, your binoculars, or your high-powered zoom on your camera, and you can pull the entire boat right back into view. Whole mass and all. Yeah, that's right. You think the boat disappeared? Just whip out your telescope, your binoculars, or your zoom camera. You bring the entire boat back into view, completely debunking everything Koi just told you. We've always believed that there was a Garden of Eden. I believe in God. I believe the universe was created by God. We realize that maybe Earth is more special than we thought after all, but for a different reason. We live in a very special time. Life is extremely special. This idea that we're not in any special place in the universe, there's something wrong with that. We went to the North Pole in the 1900s. This is 1482. Nobody went to the top of the globe, to the bottom, or flew up, or built a skyscraper. It's funny, but we said that this is, this, this is what we're in right now, this is what we're on, before any instrument of proof. This is the first time we actually had like an instrument of flight actually go high enough actually fucking check out if what we agreed to 500 years ago was real. So if they were wrong after 500 years, the question is, would they tell you? <laughs>